Hey everyone, this is a video for um, showing how I handle some of the final blending and so on. Um, so this is a master copy for the beginning painting class. It's using a limited palette. Um, that limited palette is made up of ivory black, raw umber, burnt umber, um, Indian red, burnt sienna, and yellow ochre, and then mixed with titanium white to make the tints. Um, and then I mix shades for um, Indian Red, Burnt Sienna, and Yellow Ochre using the other three shade colors depending on the color family. Um, so you can actually get a pretty wide variety of color in this. And the painting where it's at right now, it's kind of in the initial block-in stage. Some areas have maybe a little bit more work in them, but not a lot. So what I want to do is kind of show how I resolve some of these areas. Um, and I did not finish the painting in this, but hopefully you'll at least see uh, some of the blending work and so on the way that I would work on that. So, sorry about that. So as you um, watch, you'll notice that sometimes I'm also thinking a little bit about layering some things. I'm coming and bringing some of the paint into these areas and just trying to get some of the t staining and so on that I see in the original painting. So I'm bringing it in a little bit thinly with just a little touch of oil in it. And I'm using a soft haired brush. That's what I, I prefer to use. Um, you probably will not have this because of the paint brushes I've asked you to get because this by itself is like a $10 brush and most people don't want to use, spend a bunch of money on all kinds of little special specialty brushes. Um, but you can certainly get pretty close to this result with your bristle brushes. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. I'm just picky. <laughs> um, I'm coming through and since I've got the block in done, what I'm trying to do is just resolve some of the areas, clean up some of the drawing a little bit so you can see I'm cleaning up some of that curve of the handle. I'm going to go through and make some adjustments to some of these areas as well in a little bit um, with a pencil can't remember if it was this video or the one I tagged on after it. And I'm starting to use that palette to kind of refine and build like the brighter color where I need it and then the darker color. And I'm even going to go ahead and blend in some of the light in there. Not so much the highlight as the blended light that was kind of in that handle that, um, that brought in the, the rise of that handle there. And you can see I'm just being very careful, placing a little bit of paint and then moving it around just enough to get it to blend where I need to. There's a lot you can do with um, just being patient. Um, and I think it's, all, it's a factor of you needing to get a, a feeling as a beginning student for how much paint to have on the brush and how to use it. Um, I don't use a lot of oil mixed into my paint unless I'm trying to do very thin washes, kind of like what I was doing down here. But for the most part, I just use the paint as it is on my palette. So I go through, I'm going to make some of this move up just so you're not watching me paint in real time. And started kind of refining some of the colors. You can see I'm getting some cools in here with the gray. And basically what I decided is in this video, I'm going to paint in and get a lot of the shapes of the light in here where I need them to be. And then I, once I've gotten some of that resolved, and I think I did a little bit that's in the original um, painting coming up onto that light area. So at this point, I'm just being very careful with all my details, my contour lines, and making final kind of decisions as far as like the lights and shadows in areas. So you can see I blocked in some shadow coming off that handle. And I'm using the brush. I, I have a couple brushes. I'm using one to apply paint, move it around, use to feather the really soft blends that I need to do. Just kind of refining that handle up. It just takes time. I'm not sure um, I don't think it's terribly difficult. It's more that it's just time consuming and you need to have some patience and try not to rush through. So what I did in here is the top rim of this cup was a darker red. And so I placed that rim in there with a the dark color. Then I came on top and hit some of the brighter red through this area 
And then I'm going to come back through and hit a little bit of light in here and just soften it down. This might not be my final layer on this. What I might do is go ahead and hit some of this light, soften it down, and then the next time when this is dry, repaint some of that light even a little bit more. Now it's coming in with a very fine brush. Sorry about my head getting in the way. And kind of hitting that light in there. Very fine, thin, pointy brush that I can really get in and kind of hit some of these details. I came in and started working somewhat on the bone that was sitting up here and just adjusting some of the color and then softening it. So it's kind of interesting because you go, if I go back on the video, you can see I just go from that blocked in um, kind of burnt umber in there and the gray. And then I started hitting some of the green into it because I realized it was a little warmer toned. As, war as well as mixing some of the gray back into this to soften it. And just using the brush to kind of soften this transition here between the colors. I brought back in some of my background to clean up this back line. I realized that the bone had a little bit more of a graceful curve down here. So I brought that in and I've what I've got on my palette is a mixed pile basically of this green. So that's the nice thing is that... And what I'm doing here is I placed a little bit of green with my other paintbrush. This is my dry brush that I'm using to just soften those paint marks so that they blend into the underlying layer and I don't have to repaint the whole thing. So just continuing to work on cleaning up that line. And then if you, yeah, I need to do one more video after this one that shows some of the final like texture and stuff that I had to add in. But what I'm doing here is I'm basically laying my foundation so that I can put the texture over this and I won't have to keep working back into it with more darks around it. So I'm coming back in and just kind of darkening, adjusting colors, and you can see that now that bone is starting to get a little bit more of a the transition of color and, and shadow and shape that I see in the original painting. And I'm just softly kind of dragging some of this color through here to get things to feel like they're wrapping around. I ended up coming in later and kind of um, blocking in like some of some more of these areas here on the bone so that I would be able to put some of the texture on top of that later. But I'm still at this point right now, I'm just working on the lights and shadows and trying to get things to the point that I feel like they're what I see in the original painting or pretty close to it. Just lots of smaller brushes at this point and a lot more careful moves and slow moves to get to that final goal. So I don't think it's, um, it's not particularly like magical or something you can't learn. It, it really more than one of the biggest things is just having some patience and trying to move a little bit more quietly with it. Then I came in and started trying to kind of establish the underlying tone um, for that bone and then of course got caught up again in the bone itself. And you can see there's a lot of variety of color. Like now I'm putting in some yellow tones. There were grays, there were kind of these pinky tones, and then these browns. Um, and then remember there were some greens up here too. So the bone, if you just look at it without trying to pull all those colors out, feels pretty monochromatic. If you were to look at it really quick and then look away, you'd say, oh yeah, it was white or kind of an off-white. Um, but there's actually a lot of color that goes into this. And by playing with that palette and really having your values mixed correctly, you can play around a lot with this color and it's really no effort on your part because you've already mixed and matched all these values. So um, I apologize if the process of mixing the palette feels a little arduous and like I'm putting you through the ringer, but it actually 
if you do it correctly, it just makes your life so much easier when you're painting. Just pulling up some of the lights a little bit more. And I had already redrawn the areas I wanted to fix in here with pencil. So what I'm doing right now is kind of establishing that drawing with paint. So I'm coming back in and redrawing the edge of the cherry because I realized I had it sitting up too high. It needed to rest a little bit better on the bone. And then I think I came back in over the leaves and kind of did a couple things with those as well. This is kind of trying to give you a better close-up look of the painting where it's at right now. And here's my palette that I was using. So this is kind of what I was talking about. Like you can see how nicely these all kind of line up, how nicely these line up. Um, this one's a little bit lighter, but basically these kind of line up really nicely as well. This one's a little bit lighter and this one's a little darker. Probably this one just needs to be a little lighter and then this would line up better. But it's really important to have these values match going across because these were the colors right here um, that I was using through that light part of the bone. And then these were the colors right here that I was using as I moved into the shadows along with some of the greens that I had mixed. 